Okay, welcome. So today we are going to talk about uh, combinations with repetitions. So here is a typical problem. We are given a box which contains uh, let us assume a very large number of balls in each of four colors. So which are uh, red, blue, green and yellow. Now the question is find the number of ways in which one can choose 10 balls from this box. Okay. So for instance let us see what are various examples of choices. So let us just look at a few examples. So how would we encode a choice? We could keep track of the number of red balls, blue balls, uh, green balls and yellow balls. So for instance one choice could be maybe we pick 3 red, 3 blue, <coughs> 3 green and 1 yellow. Maybe we choose 5 red. So here is one possibility. Here is another choice. You could pick 5 red, 1 blue, uh, say 2 each of green and yellow okay, and so on. So you could imagine various such choices of some number of red, some other number of blue, green and yellow. But of course the total number of balls that you pick has to be 10. That is of course the, the key constraint. So observe that this is different from the problem of combinations that we have looked at so far because the typical problem of combinations says something like you have got n distinct objects and from those n objects you want to choose r of them. So the recall that <coughs> the other combinations problem, the typical combinations problem that we have looked at so far for which the number of choices is n c r is the number of ways of choosing r objects from n distinct objects. So this is number of ways of choosing r out of n keyword here being distinct objects. Now combination with repetition just means that we do not really have distinct objects anymore. For instance here what we have is let us say we are given a very large number let us say 100 each of red balls, blue balls, green balls and yellow balls and from amongst these say 400 balls you need to pick 10 of them. But the, the thing here is the, the original objects are not distinct anymore. Many of them are alike. For instance the 100 red, ball, red balls are all alike, the 100 green balls are all alike and so on. So the key distinction really comes about in the assumption that the initial set of objects is distinct. So this is the, the usual combinations problem. Now what we are looking at is what you would call combinations with repetitions. So observe that this, this sort of encoding here, the number of red, blue, green and yellow balls. So let us say the most general encoding is let us say there are x red balls, uh, y blue balls, z green balls and let us say w yellow balls. Then what this is saying is in what are all the number of uh, choices for non-negative integers x, y, z and w such that their sum is 10. So observe here that it is not necessary to choose a ball of, of a given color. For example, another choice here could be I could choose red, blue, green, yellow. You may choose 0 red balls, 0 green balls and maybe 5 each of blue and yellow. This is also a valid choice. So you are not required to choose one ball of each color at least. You can choose 0 balls for instance. So here is another equivalent reformulation. So here is problem 2 which is really the same as problem 1 in some sense. Find the number of, of solutions to the equation, number of solutions of the following equation x plus y plus z plus w equals 10 with the constraint with the requirement that x, y, z and w be non-negative integers. So let us just say this uh, where x, y, z, w are non-negative integers. Okay. So these two problems are really equivalent, equivalent to each other. Okay, so now uh, so let us look at the typical method of solution. It requires a slightly different 
way of thinking rather than the usual combinations problem. So, how do we solve this problem? So, here is the here is the typical solution how do you find the number of such solutions to this to this equation. So, let us encode it in the in the in the following way. So, what we need is so, let us let us think about it in the formulation of problem 2 what we want is the following let me write down 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 there are 10 ones now on the board ok. Now, what we will do is the following if you are given a solution x y z w for instance suppose I have x equals. So, let us take the solution that we already had for instance if you take x equals 5 y equals 1 z equals 2 and w equals 2. So, 5 1 2 2 we will think of it as follows. So, x is 5. So, let me see there are 5 ones this much is x uh, y was 1. So, that is y z is 2 and w is a 2 ok. So, we first mark these off in the list of ones and then we do the following we sort of draw dividers between them. So, here is a divider that I have drawn in red which separates the x from the y. Now, there is once I move to z I put another divider and between z and w I have yet another divider ok. So, what I have done is written a string of 10 ones with 3 dividers you know in between. Now, this this entire uh, picture here represents the solution x equals 5, y equals 1, z equals 2 and w equals uh, 2. So, this picture here represents the solution 5, 1, 2, 2 ok. And let us sort of look at a few more examples. So, let me take the next one 3, 3, 3, 1 for instance. So, here is the solution 3, 3, 3, 1 would be represented similarly 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, that is a full string there is a divider after 3, there is another divider after 6 ones, there is another divider after 9 ones ok. So, this picture now represents the solution 3, 3, 3, 1. Let us take our uh, other example uh, 0, 5, 0, 5 that is yet another solution to this equation. Now, how would that be represented? So, 0 means the following that the first divider occurs right in the beginning of this list. So, the, the number of 1s to the left of the first divider is a 0. Now, I need a 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 1s later I have another divider. Now, the next is a 0 which means that the third divider is placed at the same place more or less as the second divider ok. So, this picture now which has these 10 ones with 3 dividers placed in these positions the first divider right in the beginning and the second and third dividers placed at sort of between the fifth and the sixth ones. This picture encodes the solution 0 5 0 5 ok. So, now so sort of from these examples I hope it is clear that one can actually encode. So, each solution to that equation so each solution x y z w to the equation x plus y plus z plus w equals 10. Each such solution can be encoded. So, what we are doing is we are coming up with an encoding we want to think of the same thing in a different way which will be easier to count. It is encoded by the following thing it is encoded by a string. So, a sequence of well, it is a string of what? Well, of 13 symbols ok. So, what are these 13 symbols? Well, 10 of these one, 10 of these symbols are just ones. So, 10 ones let me write it as 10 ones and there are 3 dividers. So, 3 of these lines ok. So, there are 3 dividers. So, often instead of the divider itself which is sort of a uh, hard to write often 
you know when you are when the other symbol is a 1. So, to sort of make it uh, uniform we replace the divider by a 0 ok. So, we could as well say instead of looking at uh, a string of 1s and dividers you might as well just look at it as a string of 1s and zeros. So, for instance so let me do it here this string that we wrote out in the end which had a divider in the beginning and so on would be the following it would be a 0 followed by 5 ones followed by 2 dividers which means 2 zeros followed by 5 more ones. So, this string now of 13 symbols 10 ones and 3 zeros encodes the solution 0 5 0 5 ok to that original equation. So, we might as well just think of it like that it is a string of 13 symbols with 10 ones and 3 dividers. So, instead of dividers being this red line here I will just think of the dividers as being written out as a 0 ok. So, now the question is well we wanted to count the number of solutions to this equation it is the same as counting the number of strings of that form. Now, this is something that we have already looked at. So, this can, can be counted the number of such strings. So, recall when we you know in one of the earlier lectures we talked about writing out strings of a's and b's we said the number of strings of length n which contain r a's and n minus r b's is just n choose r because you just have to find the positions where the a's occur. Now, this is similar we have a string of 13 symbols and you pretty much only need to choose the positions where the let us say the either the 1's occur the 10 1's occur or the 3 zeros occur. So, the number of such strings is nothing but 13 choose 3 for instance or 13 choose 10 which are of course, both the same. Okay. So, that is the solution to the problem. So, now of course, it is clear what the, uh, the general solution will look like. So, let us write out uh, a general version of problem 2. Okay. So, let me let me say here is general version of problem 2 find the number of solutions of well of what here I only have 4 variables x, y, z and w in general I could assume there are n variables. So, the left hand side let me replace it by n variables find the number of solutions of the equation let us call the variables as p p 1 plus p 2 plus. So, there are n variables p 1 p through p n and the right hand side here was the number 10 in general I could assume it is some non negative integer d ok. So, what is the assumption let n be at least 1. So, there is at least one variable on the left hand side let d be some non negative integer and the question is find the number of solutions of the equation p 1 plus p 2 plus p 3 till p n equals d where all the p i's are required to be non negative integers. So, where are the variables are required to be non negative integers and again the, the, the solution methodology is the same what we will want to do is to encode every such solution as a string of zeros and 1's. So, the answer now is the number of solutions to this equation is the same as. So, this number is the same as the number of strings of well what is the total length of a string. So, observe again I need to have d ones there should be a string of d ones and the number of dividers should be n minus 1 because that is it is 1 less than the number of variables that you have right. You only have if you have n minus 1 dividers it divides the string of 1's into n parts those are the n values of the variables. So, the number of strings of length what is the total length uh, d is the number of 1's and n minus 1 is the number of zeros. So, total length is which contain with d 1's and n minus 1 zeros. So, these are the dividers. 
Okay. So, this uh, list of strings really counts the number of solutions to this equation and of course, we know now that this is nothing but d plus n minus 1 choose d or if you wish d plus n minus 1 choose n minus 1. Okay. So, that completely solves the, the problem. So, of course, the same thing can be phrased as you know in terms of uh, balls for instance, there are balls of n colors uh, and you have a very large number of balls of each color and this problem is just another way of saying in how many different ways can I pick d balls from such a box. Now, let us sort of look at another problem going back to something that we have talked about right in the beginning. So, recall we talked about polynomials in more than one variable right and there we posed a countic problem. So, we had the following question uh, we wanted to do the following suppose there are n variables let us call the n variables x 1, x 2, x n. So, these are the variables. So, we are looking at polynomials in n variables and what we want to do is the following thing we said uh, we in fact gave it a name even let us call this number a d comma n. So, we defined for each d positive a number called a d n uh, which was defined to be the number of monomials. So, this is the number of monomials of degree d. in these n variables of course. Now, and we sort of looked at some patterns, uh, we wrote down the first few values of d, we obtained a recurrence relation for d and so on. Now, recall what is a monomial, a monomial is something of the following form, it is x 1 raised to some number, x 2 power something and so on till x n raised to something. And so, let us call these exponents as something, let us call it x 1 power p 1 x 2 power p 2 x n power p n. So, what is a typical monomial look like? So, that is a monomial where what are the p i's with p i's being non negative integers okay, for all i and what is the degree of such a monomial? The degree of this monomial is just the sum of all the powers. Right. So, the problem that we looked at earlier of trying to count the number of monomials of degree d translates into the following find the number of solutions to the equation p 1 plus p 2 plus p 3 till p n equals d where all the p i's have to be non negative integers. Okay. So, observe that is exactly the problem that we, <coughs> we talked about that is the general problem 2. So, from the discussion so far Here is what we conclude that this number a d n that we studied a while ago is just the same as well what is it the d plus n minus 1 choose d because a d n is just nothing but the number of solutions. So, a d n as I said is the number of solutions to the equation p 1 plus p 2 plus p n equals d where the p i's are restricted to be non negative integers. Okay. So, observe that we have solved exactly this problem that was posed some time ago. So, so what I would like you to do is to go back to, to that lecture where we tabulated the values of a d n and where we obtained that nice recurrence relation and so on and check that this in fact does match. So, check so here is a nice exercise to do check that this in fact matches the values in the table this matches. or table from before from one of the past lectures. Okay. So, a problem on counting monomials turns out to be just a problem of doing some combinations with repetitions being allowed. Okay. So, next time we will we'll talk about uh, something more on permutations.